The upcoming weather pattern for early December is going to get extremely dangerous and wild. The Pacific Northwest especially is about to get socked with rounds upon rounds of intense rainfall and flooding. While the Northeast is about to experience one of the most significant snowstorms this early in December. After we talk about the snow and the rainstorms across the U.S., things are sure going to heat up across the Midwest also. So in this forecast, we'll break down all those details so you can stay ahead of the weather. Welcome back everybody with another detailed weather forecast. The weather pattern is about to get more wilder as we have a negative AO that we will be discussing in today's video and what that means for the nation of the United States and Canada because it's going to be a big problem. In other words, troublemaker. Looking at the latest European model for this afternoon on December the 1st on this fantastic Friday. We're almost at the end of this week and it's already starting off wild. Look at this. We got a storm system that is continuing to bring impacts across the northeast. So if you're across, say, portions of New York, yes, you're getting some rain. You're also getting some rain and severe storms down here across Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida. But this is just the beginning of the wild weather pattern that is about to show up here in the next few days, guys, because the jet stream is going to be extremely wavy. In fact, when we take a look at the latest Arctic Oscillation Index forecasted by the Euro, it is strongly negative over the next several days here. And this is going to lead to a fairly weak polar vortex, as you can see here, looking down at the Northern Hemisphere. Take note that there's ebbs and flows with the jet, it's very wavy here. And not really smooth and consistent, which is going to really unleash a lot of extremes, big rains where they shouldn't be, really wild temperature swings, and you can blame that here on the AO. In fact, you know what's more crazier? There's a big stratospheric warming event that is coming. Back looking at the United States for Saturday, you can see where the heaviest rain is going to be, especially for the southeastern U.S. You can see dark green colors, a indication that there's going to be some thunderstorms, some muggier conditions, just not your typical wintry weather that you should expect with El Nino. It's going to be really warm down there. And then of course, if you're in the Pacific Northwest, you're going to get clobbered and clobbered with snow after snowstorm for the higher elevations, big time rainfall and flood concerns for the Pacific Northwest. In fact, the Weather Prediction Center has already issued a marginal and slight risk for flash flooding and heavy rainfall for western Florida, for southern and central Georgia, for southern Alabama, for southeastern Mississippi, and southeastern Louisiana for day two. So if you're in these areas, keep in mind you could see quite a bit of runoff and some flooding on streets, some urban flooding, small stream flooding, and not to mention there's also a marginal risk for heavy rainfall and flooding across western Oregon over the Cascades. Not to mention there's even a day three slight risk for this area. So get ready folks, buckle up buttercup because it's coming. Lots of atmospheric rivers, flooding, strong winds, and a lot of problems mudslides, and that sort of thing. But here is when it gets really dangerous, especially for the Northeast. We have that weather system that's developing across the deep south, part of a weather disturbance. That's going to be moving northeastward towards the Northeast. So like, say, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. If you're in, say, Watertown, New York, if you're in Pennsylvania. Yeah, this is for your area because there is going to be some big time snowfall for early December. I mean, this is what we expected, right, on my winter forecast. We were going to see these nor'easters picking up, and I think we have one right out of our doorstep for the latter part of this weekend in early next week. In fact, the Euro really paints a good picture at showing some pretty intense snowfall there with the darker blues, a indication that there's going to be some blizzard conditions, potentially some whiteout conditions. And then, of course, not to mention, there's going to be a lot of active weather here for northernmost California and Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana. So if you're going anywhere this weekend, I mean, it's going to just be flat out balmy, stormy. Going up on the roadways, if you're just doing anything outdoors, flying to your destination, really don't do it this weekend because it's going to be stormy. Where are the areas that are encircled, um, including here for the southeast? So a really active weather pattern is really setting up right now for early December, and this is typical that we get the active portion of the forecast going. By Tuesday and Wednesday, more rainfall, more flooding for the Northeast. It's just is not going to stop. 
The storm door is open, the faucet's open for storms to come in, including one could even clip our area in Northern California by the middle to the end of this week, which is also what the GFS is indicating too. This is the Euro. And then more rainfall, more storms potentially for our area by the very end of next week, by Friday and Saturday. Just it's going to continue the barrage, the parade of storms for the Pacific Northwest. You're really going to wish that it's over once we get a dry spell in here, hopefully soon enough rather than later, because you're going to get a lot. You're going to see some flooding. In fact, take a look at these rainfall totals through the 8th of December. This is through the next seven to eight days. And wow, feet of rainfall potentially over the Cascades here of Oregon, Washington, Northern California. Are you kidding me? You might see eight inches of rainfall while down here for us, we're just hollering out. When are we going to get rain, Mother Nature? We need it, right? So you're going to get the two different demographics here yelling for rain or yelling for dry weather. Versus if you're in the southeast urn here, you're going to get more rainfall, more potential flooding as what the WPC indicates. Now, the areas that really need the rain is in Texas and also in Arizona and New Mexico. But unfortunately, the pattern is not favoring that. So I hope and I hope you all get some El Nino driven storms this winter and then more rainfall or QPF amounts there expected for the Northeast. And that's going to be in the form of some serious snowfall, folks. Buckle up, buttercups, because look at this. For southwestern Maine, including for northern New Hampshire, Vermont, man, you could see a foot or more of snowfall in that area, again, because of that colder air that's rotating, mixing in with that moisture. We're going to really get some accumulating snowfall here, and this is a little nor'easter for the northeast, and we expected this to happen during an El Nino, and here it is, right on your knocking on the door in the next few days. While if you are across the Pacific Northwest, the Rockies, you're also going to get several feet of snowfall, depending on how high up in elevation you're going to be. If you're in the valleys, probably one to two inches of snow, but if you're in those mountainous terrain, you better look out because you're going to get snow after snow after snowstorm. Now that we talked about the storminess happening across the United States with heavy rainfall, flooding, heavy snow, blizzards, that sort of thing that's coming, it's a good idea that we talk about the temperature anomalies because this is getting very serious, folks, okay? And you all are probably looking at me like, what do you mean it's serious? Okay, it's not going to be 110 degrees outside. No, it's not, but it's also not going to be excessively cold either. You're going to see temperatures so far above normal that you have not experienced a December this mild, I should say mild, not say warm, in a while. Now, for some locations like Florida, temperatures could be in the upper 80s in the next few days. That is uh, absurd for early December. So let's move on forward with these temperature anomalies because look at this. Here comes the red. The red team is coming and it's going to come with a ton of bricks. Look at this. For Montana, for the Dakotas, temperatures could be anywhere between 20 to 30 degrees above normal. Look at that. Nova Scotia. Uh, not Nova Scotia. Ugh. David, wake up. Uh, for um, if you're in British Columbia, if you're in Alberta, if you're in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, you're going to see temperatures way above average. Now, yeah, in if you are in Saskatchewan, not Saskatchewan, uh, if you are in uh, Nova Scotia, there we go. I'm looking for it in my head here, my fancy looking bald head here on the video. Temperatures are going to be well below average. You're talking about 15 to 30 degrees. I mean, this is what's going on because we have this very meridional type jet. It's just, it's just chaos and you get the, these temperatures. It just doesn't, I mean, come on, come on folks. It's early December and here you are seeing temperatures on the whole other side of the graph. Well above average. Look at all these reds going to continue for a while. And I don't see any signs of any cold Arctic outbreaks at all for the Northern tier of the United States for the foreseeable future, possibly through much of December. So when we do take a look at those actual air temperatures, you can see, yes, where are our single digits, you might ask. Where is our negative temperatures, you might ask. Uh, 
they're somewhere and they're not here. In fact, the coldest temperatures are being observed over Russia and over Siberia. That's where the Canadian air really actually is, right? And so on our side of the world, it's much warmer. And I mean, look at this. You just cannot find, I mean, come on, above freezing temperatures for Sunday, for Sunday, December the 3rd. Look at these temperatures in Texas for the Deep South. Low 70s? Are you kidding me? We got some low to mid 80s in Florida. Wow. I mean, just kind of a wow moment. You're just, I'm just, jaw. it's jaw dropping warm for these areas for this time of the year where you should already be in the single digits and say upper teens, mid teens. You're not even going to see the teens because it's going to be so warm out there. In fact, look at this. Uh, portions of, say, uh, Manit uh, Manitoba, Canada, as well as Alberta, Canada, you might see a mixed bag of temperatures between the 20s all the way up to as warm as the mid-40s during the day. That is just obnoxious. It's just, I, I can't, it's just, I'm speechless, okay? I'm not trying to hype up to cause fear, to cause me to get more views, just to be my ego here, No. This is real, folks. This is, it, it. you can see it here in the temperature anomalies. I mean, I just don't hype up things just to scare people. This, I mean, you see this and you're like, wow, it's not even, I mean, this is more like, if you want to put this in a per better perspective, this is more like a late October pattern that is in place with these temperatures on what they feel like. And I mean, low 80s in Southern Texas, just, I just cannot, it's just, wow, that's all I got to say. Therefore, the Climate Prediction Center over the next 6 to 10 days really illustrates with what I just talked about. Definitely no Arctic outbreaks in sight at all. Temperatures, or chances of above average temperatures are 70 percent right now all the way from northern texas all the way up into the northern plains including the great lakes i mean wow if you want to find cooler weather you have to go into the pacific northwest where you're going to see at least near normal temperature chances there the 8 to 14 day forecast does not shed any light at all it is going to remain above average chances across the eastern half i mean this is Typical with El Nino, at least for the northern tier, but for the southern tier, you should expect temperatures to be a little cooler than this because of more rainfall and such, including the west. I mean, this is not your typical El Nino pattern by any means in the next couple of weeks. Precipitation chances of above or below average are like this. The green areas do indicate at least leaning above average, while the browner colors, uh, such as Los Angeles, you're leaning below average, including for my area, we're at equal chances, which is good for storm lovers like Ronald Martinez. Yes, you know who you are, Ronald, and I hope you clicked on this video because I got some good news coming later on. All right, looking at the next couple of weeks here, pretty much the entire United States here is lit up in green. So we have a leaning chance, which, I mean, that's you don't see that very often. I mean, something's up here, okay? And so what I think is, I think it's going to remain fairly wet for the Pacific Northwest and really wet down here for the Deep South than what this is actually showing. But of course, it's the Climate Prediction Center, and I cannot argue with them. Looking at the precipitation for the next three weeks is as such, also wet down here, dry up to the north. That is more like a typical El Nino pattern. With that being said, I want to show you something very cool that I created over the last week or so on the computer here, of course, in my home weather office is my new website. And I want to share this with you all really quickly before I close down the video is first of all, I shared this in a community post and some of you already like it very much. And so if you haven't visited it yet, I would highly recommend doing so. There is a link in the description below this video leading to the sacramentoweathercenter.com website. All right. But it's really actually Sacramento Weather Center office or weather forecast office that I do. And you can see my about page uh, about who I am. I'm going to add more to this over time. So um, expect more updates to the website to come, including my most important. That's kind of why I created this is my blog. So if you guys want to get my updates almost on an everyday basis, you can go check out my blog by clicking blog. Once you get to the website, you can see it right here. And then, of course, the most exciting thing is the links. 
All the links that I use for my weather forecasts and others that I'm adding to this will be listed here. So if you want to check out the National Weather Service, you can click the link and it takes you right to the National Weather Service. If you want to go to, let's just say, the atmospheric river scale, some of you um, may wonder what this actually is. You can learn more about it here by going to the atmospheric river uh, by clicking the link. Uh, all the links are just here. Zoom Earth included. Um, you can um, check this out too. These programs that I use, very exciting. And I'm excited to present you all this. And then of course, you can see the disclaimer and you can also show your support by making a $5 donation today to help keep the website running smoothly. You can also check out my Twitter page. There's a link in the description below this video leading to my Twitter page where you can get also updates on what's going on across the United States, especially with what the Euro show last night. I don't know how extreme you can get with this pattern. I made a tweet and a lot of people actually liked it. Really wavy. What if that came true, right? What would it be like, right? I'll tell you what, I'll give a little bit of a spoil alert. If a ridge like that builds over the eastern portion of Siberia, you could have temperatures 90 degrees above average. Okay, but then you go across the Bering Sea uh, into Alaska where you could have temperatures 40 to 50 degrees below average. So yeah, showing you the extreme of what these troughs can actually be. That's a very good example of what a very wavy amplitude wave pattern looks like on a model. With that being said, I sure hope you did enjoy today's video, folks. If you did, please consider subscribing, sharing this video with your family and friends on social media, and also ring the bell icon to get latest notifications every time I do release a video. I'm going to be on top of this much more than ever. I will try to have a video out every single day from here on out as we go deeper into winter when the pattern is looking a lot more active as you can see here so if you haven't subscribed yet i would highly recommend doing so because it really means a lot to me and not only that i want to thank you all for checking out my sacramento weather center forecast office website in yesterday's video we got a lot of new visitors so i want to thank you all for that there will be a link in the description below this video leading to that website, so be sure right after this video is over, be sure to check it out. It, it it's I go into very in-depth detail on the weather, especially for the Central Valley folks that live near me, the localized people, that is. But otherwise, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.